rolling. We're live. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to a Mullet Man podcast. What's up, guys? I need the sound effects. <laughs> Today, our special guest is uh, Ben Dedamonte, otherwise known as Shed Crazy. That's right. He is uh, a partner of mine, along with Ben Sandal, that bailed on us. He didn't bail. He had uh, he had to go somewhere. But we are in Colorado elk hunting. That's why we are doing a podcast today. Uh, what, what are you doing? I'm playing with the microphone. I think I got it where I like it. I won't touch it again. And you're eating a snack stick and drinking a monster. I'm just trying to make this as uh, in difficult to listen to as possible. Yeah. I'm doing a good job, huh? <laughs> I, can, I, can, I can hear the chewing. <laughs> we cracked ourselves up over that yesterday. <laughs> Put some more sound effects over my chomping. So anyway, we are in. Uh, I, I wish I was bringing you guys a hunting video today, but it has really been a grind here in Colorado. We just got done taking a nap. We've really been grinding it yeah. out. <laughs> Serious grind. Um, but no, really, it has been a grind. We've we've gotten on elk pretty much every day, whether it be in the morning or in the afternoon, but. We're not going to talk about that. If y'all want to check out the elk hunts here in Colorado, uh, our channel, Real Hunting, that I'm doing with Ben and the other Ben, uh, y'all go subscribe to that channel, and all the elk hunting content will be uh, posted pretty soon. Yeah. Uh, probably by the end of the week, the first video will be up, and we're doing like a daily series. So y'all be able to see all the elk that we saw every day. We had some really close encounters. Um, both of us did. Mm-hmm. Um, so you'll be able to see that, but today we're going to talk about shed crazy. Yeah. Uh, if y'all don't know who he is, he's a YouTuber, obviously, uh, your YouTube, just tell us, tell us a little bit about yourself and, uh, where you live. Yeah. When you started YouTube, all that good stuff. Yep. So, uh, I've been doing YouTube for almost five years, four and a half years, full time. Uh, before that I was a very prestigious janitor at a high school. Um, <laughs> I, had, <laughs> I, had, I had a lot of different jobs I did over the years. I was going to school and stuff. And um, yeah, like clear back in about 2016, uh, my social media started popping off and I decided to try to do that full time instead of uh, instead of working. I was uh, in school to be a paramedic and I just dropped that. Didn't you do that too? Yeah. Uh, not paramedic. I went to EMT school and firefighter school and stuff. So. Yeah. And exactly I know you've been, sure. uh, Ben's been on a lot of podcasts and a lot of different uh, YouTube videos where you've told your story. Yeah. So you don't have to go in depth. There's, y'all can go check out Hush's page and what other, mm -hmm. where else have you told your long story? Yeah. I, the, yeah. The whole long thing is on, um, is on Hush's podcast. I did with them a little while back. And then like, I have videos about it on my page too. Like yeah. I've, videos of me quitting my job and talking yeah, I was about just about I'm to say I think for. that's probably the coolest part about it is you filmed clocking out for the last time and yeah uh throwing all the chips in and going for the YouTube and it worked out yeah so far it's been doing pretty good my channel you know I'm not like on mullet man level or anything like <laughs> yeah. that like um I, I have a fairly small channel but I'm able to make a decent living off of it and it's cool man we get to come out here and do stuff like this like yep real hunting's been fun uh, we've been doing that for just under a year now and uh there's a lot of good videos on our channel to check out too. So Ben Sandal's been crushing some good content. Yeah, real hunting is way under a year. Yeah, like four months, right? I think we launched in March, but we've been talking about it for a lot longer. So yeah, six, seven months. Yeah, but it's been fun. It's been fun working with you guys and yeah, seeing the different styles and stuff. But it's funny too because obviously you live in Texas, I live in Southern Utah, Ben's in Arizona. And we're always doing this stuff remote, so it's good to get together and kind of just hang out and, and spend some time chasing bulls. Yeah, and there we, we got a lot of other stuff planned as well. This was just kind of a, hey, let's go over-the-counter elk hunt. Yeah. Let's all go punch a tag, and then you get here, and it's like, all right, who's who's going to be the lucky guy? <laughs> yeah, we'll see. It's been kind of a tough <laughs> hunt for sure. Like, I definitely should have got it done. Uh, I wish I would have had one more second, but you guys will have to check out the videos because the footage has been good, actually. Yeah. Yeah, get some good stuff. It's just tough. It's still hot here. It's like ninety degrees right now outside, um, and that's why we were taking a nap and not hunting because these bulls are bedded under, in the thickest stuff possible, and there's no way to do it without running in there and bumping them out and then never seeing them again. Yeah, it's just like a little bit of action in the morning and um, a little bit of action in the evening, and then you spend the whole day kind of just like 
doing podcasts and whatnot. Yeah. No, but I'm excited to do this because I, I, I wanted to bring you guys a hunting video, like I said, but I didn't want to uh, give you all a video of us just walking around and seeing an elk here and there. Uh, it will be integrated into the video when I kill an elk, hopefully. Uh, I still have four or five days, and you still have two or three days. So. Yeah, I'm going home Saturday, and this is what, Thursday? Thursday, yeah. So Saturday night, probably. We have time, for sure. It's not over. The fat lady's warming up, but she ain't sung yet. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to get it done, <laughs> dude. <laughs> Here, hit the button, hit the button. <laughs> We just figured out. I hope y'all can hear that, but <laughs> what if we it's just not on there? <laughs> we just figured out that this uh, podcast recorder has sound effects. Uh, so if y'all didn't hear it, there's a really funny sound effect playing whenever it's I hit that. It's gonna be thing. way more awkward if it doesn't show up. <laughs> I don't care. So uh, yeah, a little bit more about Shed Crazy. So you sell sheds, mm -hmm. but you started out. Um, Obviously, your love was for hunting mm -hmm. and shed hunting. Yeah. I was shed hunting just because I couldn't get enough hunting, right? Like, I could it's never off buy that many tags. You yeah. Know? I just hunted the local stuff in southern Utah where I lived. And sheds gave me an opportunity to, like, just get out and do it year-round. So, me and a couple of my good buddies and my brother-in-laws, we all started just kind of, like, driving to... We'd drive to Nevada or Arizona. Just in the, even in the middle of summer, we'd go out there and just walk around and pick up elk antlers and you'd sell them and you get a little bit of extra money for gear or whatever. And it was, uh, something that we just kind of like, I got obsessed with mm -hmm. to the point where I was doing it way more than I was hunting. Just like drive on, like I would do it on the weekend when I was working, I would drive all night, shed hunt all day and drive all night home. Yeah. That's nuts. Live for it just to go find elk antlers. So you burn out on it now? Or are you still deep into it or it's funny? Cause it definitely has changed. Like I'm still, I still love it. I still love finding elk antlers and stuff. But then I got into hunting full time and like it opened tons of doors. So I get to hunt way more now. So yeah. like I have way more tags every year, you know, so I end up shed hunting less, which is funny because shed hunting was the vehicle for me hunting more. And it's changed a whole bunch. You've talked about since, yeah. since you started shed hunting. There's so many people doing it now and you got to get out there and yep. locate sheds before the season starts yeah, and then run out there scout. open in the morning and go pick them up. It's yeah, it's definitely not the same game that it was when I first started. Uh, it was, I mean, it just used to be that there was there was guys doing it, but uh, they would go out during prime time. That's and nuts. now guys shed hunt year round and and there's seasons and so everybody goes for the opener. Yeah, and part of, that's probably all my fault because I made it too popular. Yeah, <laughs> shed, yeah, you definitely have the uh, <laughs> you have the shed market wrapped up. Yeah, sure. those are, those are my people, man. Yeah, I love those people like. Well, the diehard diehards probably hate me for making it popular, but like yeah. so many guys that love to shed hunt, man, they live for those videos. You see them in the comments on YouTube, like, oh, we need more shed videos, shed videos. So we spent a lot of time in Texas last year getting this thing rolling and instead yep. of shed hunting. So I left, uh, I left the month of December pretty open this year because I want to go pick up a bunch of In December. Hunters. So they'll be. We white. Last, so this past season's. Yeah, nothing fresh. Really? But yeah, it's a good. I like to go out that time of year because. Hmm. You can find new spots for the coming season and just go figure out. Is it not all bikes. snow? Um, a lot of where I hunt low elevation desert, really? so it doesn't get snowed in. It can, but usually when it's snowed in, it's like February. No, I think that's that's fun. Like um, during the summer in Texas, it's just so hot, and you just like dream of just sitting on a cool point and glassing, like yeah. whether you're seeing something or not. So yeah, I could see where shed hunting would be like a a second hunt just yeah. going out there and sitting on a ridge glass and you get the same feeling whenever you spot a shed like oh my gosh there's one oh i get pumped because yeah. it's like you know you got it right if yeah. you see a big buck you're like oh we got to figure out how to kill this thing yeah you find a shed you're like that's mine that and i mean glassing up a shed versus glassing up a 300 inch 300 inch elk is a lot yeah a lot more uh harder it is it's tough sometimes they stand out but yeah glass and antlers is is tough, but it's pretty effective. Like you can definitely find them at long range and stuff. That's nuts. I know Eric has. I've watched some of his videos, and he's like, I mean, I'm sure you do the same thing, but just like two ridges over, and he just sees a white tine sticking mm -hmm. out of a bush and walks all the way over there. There's no way I'd do that, but whatever. <laughs> it's definitely not for everybody, but yeah, it's man. Some of the best elk sheds I've ever found have been through the glass, like 
one of the biggest sets to this day I've ever picked up. I glassed up in Nevada and all I could see was the fifth point on a bull. On like, one? Uh-huh. I'm like, I know that's a horn. So I went clear over there. It was like 1,500, 1,600 yards. Jeez. Found the one side. Then the other side was up the hill. And then the cool thing was I never would have gone into that pocket because it didn't look like good elk country. But since that time, I've picked like over 200 elk antlers out of that. Really? That spot. Is that the one that you got refurbished? Mm, no. Mm -mm. That's a different So what's your biggest uh, set? Um, my biggest set of sheds, it was tough because he was like real chalky and busted up. And we had to kind of guess what that's he was missing. That's the one missing. that you got? Yeah, gotcha. and that's the one that, well, my buddy has him right now. Oh, but gotcha. he hasn't refurbished him yet. But we thought that bull um, was about four, like 402 to 406, depending right. on what he was missing. That's nuts. He's a huge, huge bull. Um, the one I got refurbished that I have in my office are off a of deadhead in Arizona. Oh, yeah, you told me that you had to cut them off because mm -hmm. they were so heavy. I had to cut the skull plate because they wouldn't fit in the truck. Dang. But, uh, yeah, that bull was um, like 385. Jeez. And uh, just a tank. But I got those ones fixed back up. My buddy, McKay, does uh, antler restoration, Trapper Man antlers, and did a killer job on those. I mean, y'all y'all talk about these 350 360 bulls all the time i'm just like dude i just want like a 250 <laughs> dude, it's i just want a raghorn that's all i want well we're like i live in the corner of southern utah that's like the mecca right we have big bulls in arizona nevada and, and utah and i live right in the middle of all of them same with big mule deer so like we're super yep. spoiled on what a big bull is but even then it's not like i've killed all these giant bulls or anything you know like i've killed one bull over 350 yeah and super stoked to have that even i got lofty goals to kill some more but yeah it's pretty uh like weird seeing how rare like a 380 bull is oh man yeah it's like i thought it was like oh yeah this guy shot a 380 this guy shot a 380 no those are 350 bulls right. everybody's saying they're 380s well even i mean in utah they kill a handful of bulls in the 380 range every year and, yeah. and most of them are guided clients and stuff there's some do it do it yourself guys that pull it off but social media just makes everything seem like that yep you know, oh there must be big bulls everywhere for but you sure just, just see the cream of the crop yep there's a lot of guys eating their tags and not posting anything about it yeah i can't wait to draw arizona dude yeah i drew last year and uh it was a riot man yeah i did a late uh -huh. archery tag down there and dude i was seeing tons of bulls tons of good bulls and i still just shot a bull the first 10 minutes yeah me and uh me and ben were talking about yesterday he said he didn't even get his class up on the tripod and you called him you're like i gotta pull down <laughs> it was quick yeah it was like 10 minutes after legal shooting light that bull walked by me at 31 yards that's nuts i'm like what are you gonna do it's like a 330 bull we just know? need that twice here Right? That's all we need. Well, it could happen. I had that bull oh, at 28. I, I had that. I had two bulls at 97. That's a chip We shot. have all that on footage, too. So y'all go check out Real Hunting. Go subscribe. Our goal was to hit 10,000. We're right there. We slacked. Dude, we're um, right there. We're there, though. Yeah. It's like 20. We're like 98.5 yeah. right now. So this this podcast should put it over the top. We'll see. Hopefully. I, ho I hope you guys enjoy this podcast, but it's just a hard thing. Um, if you're used to like full on hunting videos right. to listen to Sit a down podcast, and watch but I, and, shoot the I really enjoy them. Um, so I hope that you guys like them over time cause I think they're fun. Yeah. But I like making them too. It's a good chance to just kind of like go a little deeper on some of these topics. We kind of glaze over. Yep. Obviously we all have expectations coming to these places. I was pumped, jacked up months before this getting stuff ready and just like dreaming of that 300 inch bull walking out and Screaming. sandal behind me calling it in mm -hmm. not the case but it seems like that happens a lot on uh these over-the-counter hunts you've been on a lot of them too it just never seems to play out like it and then you have the trip that you go on and you're like oh my gosh i want an over-the-counter unit in colorado and i just shot a 320 bull right it's open in morning so yeah I don't know. The reality of it is it's all a lot tougher too. Like everybody I think has like in their mind how they think it's going to go when they come to one of these tough hunts. Yep. And then, you know, they can go like that. Like it's hard to characterize, you know, like the over the counter as a whole, but the stuff that we've been hunting has just been, it's tough. It's lower elevation. The bulls. Cedars and oak brush. Mm -hmm. No pines or quakies. Quakies. Got to have some quakies. Um, yeah, it's like with the over-the-counter I hunt in Utah is like that a lot because 
it seriously is like can be weeks of not seeing elk. Yeah, that's nuts. You yeah. didn't you go like thirty days without seeing an elk? Or thirty days before um, you shot an elk? I've spent as many as thirty to get a bull killed yeah. up there. Yeah. And it's uh that's just kind of the nature of the beast on that unit and really you only have about thirty days. Yeah. So like if you kill a if you hunt the whole archery and the whole rifle and kill it towards the end of the rifle, you can be that many days into it for sure. Last year though, I only hunted it like five days and killed the bull. Really? And dude, I finally got like what I felt was like true rut action on that hunt and it was awesome. I got into a pocket and You called him in. I didn't call the bull in that I ended up killing and they were bugling all around me and I was just trying to make plays on them. That's awesome. That's what that's another thing here is it's so hot. We haven't heard I mean, we heard a few bugles down on the private on the river, um, but out on all the public stuff, we haven't heard a single bugle. Yeah, like on our over-the-counter stuff in Utah, you you typically won't. Yeah. Um, but these bulls were bugling good, and it was uh, like mid-October, and they were fired up breeding Dang. cows. Hmm. So yeah, the bull I killed was running cows like crazy. He was all run ragged. He'd been rutting super hard, and he still tasted good yeah good bull. well another one of our problems here is the pressure these bulls are running for their lives mm-hmm. if they barely catch your wind or they barely see you or a limb moves they're like running and they're not stopping until you can't see them anymore yeah um and some of the times they're we're catching them coming out of the river out of the private and they're already running mm-hmm. with nothing spooking them yeah and there's multiple guys around too people set yeah. up on points and it's just a high pressure area and that's kind of on us for like not knowing where we're going to be hunting like we know um the ranch and stuff but that's just the style of hunt that they do there yep. they have um some like paid clients and stuff some guys down in the private and set up in in you know higher odds scenarios and we kind of just play with the bulls when they come up on the public and um i think if we were to spend more time over here scouting it out and stuff we could definitely find some of those public land spots where the bulls are hanging out higher yeah. elevation but i mean it's just takes years to figure those spots out like you see these guys i have a buddy um that's over here right now hunting over the counter elk and the dude's a killer i'll give him a shout out his name's his name's jeff hell he's a stud but um tell him to uh come help us out he would dude he's <laughs> such a good guy um every year he comes over here gets into bugling bulls and kills really? bulls and he's from texas too dang but he's just been coming here forever man he just has his spots dialed in yep you don't, you don't give those up. No, nah, we're just kind of starting that process. Yeah. We come over here year after year. We're going to figure it out. There's no, yeah. no doubt in my mind. I didn't start killing bulls on the over-the-counter in Utah for years. And it just took a lot of being there. Yeah, it's crazy how, like, just one little ridge over, you can be in a whole other world. Mm-hmm. Like, yesterday, me and Ben, well, y'all just have to watch the videos, but just minor adjustments and really pattering patterning (laughs) (laughs) i don't even know how you say that patterning patterning um can make a world of difference like chris he knows these bulls up here so well like if he was with us i it'd probably be a little bit different story already but just because he knows them he's been Mm -hmm. on the same bulls year after year not the same bulls but the same elk um yeah yeah, there really is a strategy to it. Like, he knows what point to sit you on and stuff. Like, typically yeah. they do this, they come up through here. And that's the benefit of having somebody like Chris who has so much experience with these animals. And you guys can hunt with Chris, too. He sells hunts. And yep. Smokingriverpursuit.com. Yeah, he's a cool guy and a good cook. Yep. He's awesome. He's a foodie like us. Yeah. You eat good. Yeah. They eat good. They eat good. We're about to go into town and eat us uh, some uh, fast food Chinese Drive food. Drive through Chinese food. I'm excited for it. And that's what I like, too, about hunting Colorado, because you can be up in the hills, but town's just right there. Yep. You can watch Harry Potter in the afternoon. That's what we watched. <laughs> we watched Harry Potter. Took a nap. This is the best movie to nap to, because yeah. it's got, like, this eerie classical music, music in the background. <laughs> <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> you can just sleep the whole time. But, no, I've actually had a ton of fun on this trip. Oh yeah, I'm glad we finally blast. got together, and we'll actually probably be back out here to hunt some deer this year. Yep, be here in November. So I'm excited for that. I'm going home with meat in my cooler though. So if it comes down, I'm shooting a cow. I just want the meat. Well, but I'm gonna shoot a bull if, if I can. Let's just go hard these last few days, man. Like we've been hunting hard. Let's stick it out. And yep. uh, I think there really is a chance that one of us at least can get a shot at a bull. For sure. Just because the amount of elk that are here is good. Yep. It's just they're high pressure. There's no giants, but I don't care. That one bull's yeah. good. Yeah. 
three twenty, three thirty bull. Yeah, it's a good bull anywhere. We just gotta get him up and out of that private. Yeah, that's gotta be. I think, I think there's a chance. There's yeah. always a chance as long as we're here in the game, you know. Yep. And it can change so fast. We talk about it all the time. Like it can just drop of a hat. You go from like, what are we doing to like, oh man, this was a great hunt. Yeah, I know. Taking just, pictures of a bull. Dang. Yeah. But yeah, we're not we're not let down. We're we're having fun. But I hope you guys enjoyed these podcasts. Y'all go check out Ben's channel, Shed Crazy on YouTube. And uh, please go check out Real Hunting on YouTube. It is our page that we're, us three are doing together. We have a lot of awesome hunts planned. And we threw up a podcast over there um, that y'all can go check out. It actually won't be up yet. Um, that'll be up at the end of this week as well. But it's going to explain a lot on what's going on and uh, what else we have planned coming up. So I uh, hope you guys enjoy the podcast. Stay tuned. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the thumbs up. And remember, eat good. Ego.